have you ever fo always followed his his musical projections? Mm -hmm. Have I followed uh, them? and these musical uh, activities? Uh, well, yeah, obviously I've known what he's been up to and kind of. Do you like it? Some of them, yeah. Yeah, he had this project called Hoof, which was really cool a while ago. But that kind of, it was, I think there was, it was like, how many of them? There's like five guys and it was just really raucous and uh, it, 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 it just came, imploded. What did he think of you, your music, do, do you know? Have you, has he always listened to your solo records? Well, as I said, when he first heard the, 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 my, my first solo album, he was just like, he appreciated it, but it wasn't really his... Thing, you know. Do you um, think that you have could could have because the reason you split up or you, that it was because you what had different ambitions maybe in this kind of vein? But mm. did he s maybe thought afterwards that you could have also done this in Lamb or was it? No, I think I think again that's why it was really important that we split when we mm -hmm. did because we were kind of trying to do that when we wrote Between Darkness and Wonder, the last Lamb album. That was we were working with the live band and there was this. It was becoming a band, and it, 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 in a way, it kind of had moved too far away from the initial essence of what Lamb was about on the first album, which was the kind of almost the kind of uh, dichotomy between my vocals and um, lyrics and his very electronic sort of innovation. You know, it became diluted with this whole idea of involving the, the live band. Mm -hmm. And I think that was in a way me trying to pull Lamb into a kind of more acoustic zone. And thinking back, that really didn't work. It never would have worked. You know, what worked was for me to go off and do acoustic stuff. To li and to leave Lamb be what, what Lamb really needed to be. And that's why coming back into the whole idea and writing the new album, we were very clear from the word go that that's what we wanted it to be, that it was going to be really stripped and raw and bring some of that ethos of the first record, but, you know, have it be very much about now. Because I think Andy said it that at the first record you were in a positive way a bit naive, maybe, the way you approach things. Was, is, is it possible or was it possible to, to recreate this naivety a little bit? When, because all of the, you've done a lot of things in between and it's possible to, to, because you already have this history now and you didn't have that maybe on the first record, mm. is it possible to, to step in fresh or, and, and not fall back into old ways of working? Or I think because we have the dis... I mean, it would be inauthentic to recreate na naivety because mm -hmm. we've grown up a lot. You know, you can't go back to a sort of earlier incarnation, you know, but... I certainly think this new album is kind of like a rebirth in a way that, that we, because of the distance and because of going away and, and coming back, we were able to kind of see the project more clearly and, and come at it with a, with a fresh approach. Can you, can you describe the feeling that you had when yeah, you said you worked on one song that started the whole thing maybe, but you had nothing, if, if I'm correctly, and, and Andy already had some ideas that he pre maybe he, he had already sort of finished or sketched out. Can you describe the, the feeling that you had when you first listened to some of the ideas that he thought maybe would be suitable for Lamb? Well, I mean, this was an idea that he'd been working on for his load project. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the sounds that he... The thing with, the, thing with um, the way we work in the studio is that we try not to have a kind of a formula, but one thing that we do really feel is important is that when we present ideas to one another, we, we present them in their most basic form, because then it can grow. Which is a, just a melody or rhythm pattern? Or yeah, or, or. I mean, just, you know, Strong the Root was just a dirty groove, you know, and I liked it immediately. and. Felt that I could write something to it, or without, you know, given the the, the, mm -hmm. the difficulties that I was having. But um, so it wasn't as if Andy came to me with a load of half-finished tracks, mm -hmm. and there was a whole, there was a bunch of those that the ideas that he brought that I didn't like at all. You know, just like now, nah, that's that's a load song, or you know, I, there's certain, um, you know, what makes Lamb is 
the kind of uh, the differences between the two of us, I think. And you know, I'm very well, there's certain sounds I hate in electronic music. You know, can you describe starts, something that that is? If really it starts to sound like kind of electro trance or something, I'm just like, no. Will he try yeah. to put it yeah, in yeah. sometimes? Yeah. So you have and to so be constantly on your guard. And so I have to be kind there. of very, you know, and so that's yeah. So the the big ideas that he'd bring to the table that were just like, no, I'm sorry, but no. And same with me, you know, I might have ideas that he. Doesn't Where does he draw the line? Can you describe that? Where does he draw the line with me? Yeah. Um. It's sad that he's not here, but I assume you can maybe answer I the question. No, I mean. I guess he tends to, uh, he probably doesn't actually kind of draw the line in the sense of no, I'm, we're not having that, but he'll try and push me in directions that I might not want to go in lyrically or vocally. And that's kind of how he really sees his role. So, whereas I'm kind of going, no, not that, he's going, can you just go a bit further that way, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, think, I think we both push each other in ways that we might not always be comfortable with, but that's what makes Lam sound the way it sounds. Um, yeah, is, you mentioned li lyrically, is, is he involved in your lyrics, in what you write about? Do you talk a bit about, with it, yeah, about it with him? He, I'm very territorial about lyrics. I'm kind mm -hmm. of, he, tr he tries to get involved and I kind of get a bit snappy about it. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's just something that I'm very... Um, yeah, just territorial about, I guess. And, and it's something that I, I, I try to not be quite that territorial about it, but it, it's one of those knee-jerk reactions that I have. Um, you know, I guess, I think the difference is that back, you know, back when we were writing some of the earlier albums, I might have walked out when he sort of said, I don't really like that line, whereas now we try and work with it. Same with, you know, I, sometimes he, in the studio he can be working on a sound and I just really don't like it, but I know that he's got to get to the end of the process. And quite often he'll work on it for a couple of hours and I'll be in the other room going, I really don't like this, but I'm not going to say it yet. Yeah. And he'll come to the end of the process and go, that doesn't really work, does it? And I go, yeah, phew, but, yeah, yeah. I didn't have to say that, you know, but... So when you're silent, he knows uh, that you... Yeah, but I know that he has to kind of get to, the, you know, maybe, yeah. get to the, that point of, of exploring it and then, you know... Let him draw his own conclusions. Yeah, so. yeah.